the road has been unpaved for like five miles now. Because we've been driving on this bumpy ass road for over a freaking hour, going the max like six miles per hour. Because my baby girl got a dainty suspension. Okay, so now we have a new issue. I'm getting an error saying our pilot camera is unavailable. The feature may be restored on next drive. Full self driving unavailable. My blind spot monitoring doesn't even work. This sucks. A lot of you guys are wondering, you know, why I go on so many road trips. And I don't know if you guys saw my previous videos, but Simba, our golden retriever, was diagnosed with thyroid cancer at six years old. And that was over a year ago. They removed the tumor. They did find that it invaded the vessels, which means that it's a potential possibility that the cancer could have spread. So we had him on chemo. We have him currently on chemo because when they did a CT scan, they found a couple of new nodules in his lungs. As long as he stays on the Palladia, which is the cancer medicine, we give him a good diet. Hopefully everything will be okay. And then we thought it was okay for the most part. He did do a follow-up x-ray and there wasn't any huge growth, which is great. I noticed a few months ago that Simba had a lump in between his toes. And a lot of times with dogs, it could be like interdigital cyst due to like allergies and stuff like that. So we just went to the vet to get it biopsies to see what it is. And I just got a call from the vet like, 30 minutes ago, and they said that it is a, it's a mast cell tumor. It's another cancer. And it's just kind of heartbreaking because, you know, our dogs are our children. My wife and I, we don't plan on having kids. So it just sucks because, I mean, I want to give him the best life possible. And that's where we're going on all these road trips. That's why we went to Oregon twice. That's why we went everywhere with the pool. We try to find an Airbnb with the pool. We try to go everywhere where he could swim and he could just explore the world and live the best life he can. Aside from that, moving on, we are gonna be going to Mammoth Lakes. We went there in the winter once and I just wanted to go in the fall when it looks pretty with the leaves and everything. And we wanted to just kind of take you guys on another road trip with the Tesla to show you how easy it is to drive. I know in Mammoth in the winter, it gets really, really cold and it snows there and it does decrease your range. So we're gonna be going to different places near Mammoth because we're gonna be there for a few days and we're gonna be taking you guys on our journey. Um, taking Simba everywhere we can. So yeah, so hope you guys enjoy. Hopefully everything's good and let's just go ahead and get started with that road trip. New day, new attitude. So we are packing up right now. Luckily I have my Tesla road trip packing list. Uh, I made these for you guys. It's super detailed. Check that out if you guys wanna purchase that. But it really just helps to make sure you don't forget anything when you're on a road trip. We got the dog stuff there. We got our cooler, we're gonna fill up there. I think I might have to bring another cooler because this is too small for my big Costco broccoli. The cool thing is we are also going to be stopping at the Rivian Supercharger or their charging network. It's only one of two Rivian high-speed chargers and it's in the same spot where the Tesla Supercharger is. So it's going to be super cool. We're going to see if we could charge there. I got my CCS adapter and we're just going to see how quickly it charges as well as how easy it is to charge. And that is in, in Yokern. We're gonna be going there, we're gonna be going to Lone Pine. And I'm gonna show you where we charge up at the Tesla Supercharger in Mammoth Lakes because there's not that many places to charge there. Changing the charge limit to 100%. So we packed the car up, got my cooler here. I'm bringing this one for sure because the hotel we're staying at only has a mini fridge. So this is a freezer fridge combo. I got raw meat in there broccoli, yogurt for Simba, all that good stuff. Got that. But yeah, I mean, the trunk in the Model Y isn't the biggest. We got water there, the cooler, a luggage. I have this little cart thing here. So I'm gonna be putting the dog backpack on top of this and I have to find a way to fit all this stuff on here. So it's jam packed. It's gonna close. Oh my, it doesn't even close. Okay, I had to rearrange everything. So take two. Close, 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 close. Okay, barely closed, but I think I can just manually close this. There we go, got it. I charged 100% right now. We're at 312 miles, which is crazy because the last time I charged to 100%, 
I was at 323 miles. Again, if you haven't seen my video, watch that video. This is a reconditioned battery, so I don't know if that's affecting the battery health, longevity of the batteries. I do have a wheels video coming out soon just to see the range and efficiency of that. So that's gonna be coming out. But overall, we're gonna be going to Inyokern first. So let's go ahead and get the road trip started, baby. Dogs are ready to go. Simba can do whatever he wants now, so he gets to be in the front. Peanut. Okay, so we made it to the Rivian Chargers. This one says it's free, stay adventurous. I don't know if it's actually free, if it's just for Rivian people. Uh, there's numbers on here. They even have one for trailers. If you have a trailer hookup over there, which is awesome. So all I'm gonna do is, I mean, I have the app, but it says it's free. So let's just see if it works. So I got the adapter here, Rivian vehicles only. So unfortunately I was not able to charge the Tesla with a Rivian charger. I can use these ones, which is the J1772 ones. Plug in to charge, free, 11.5 kilowatts max. But it looks like I can use it if I wanted to. Oh, it's working. So it is working. So it is working, you get 11 kilowatts. 11 kilowatts, there we go. It is free, so that's nice. Charging up. Only once here, we are currently charging at 205 kilowatts. 206, 207. The last time we came here at 4 a.m., the restrooms were not open. However, right now it's 8 a.m. and the restrooms are open and are very clean, apparently. My wife just used it, so. A little disappointing with the Rivian charging. I thought they were gonna let everyone use the Rivian chargers. It makes sense that they're not gonna do that because there's barely any available, but yeah. Ooh, clean. I mean, it's so funny though, because it's so close to the Tesla superchargers. I mean, the Rivian chargers are like over there. And the Tesla ones are like right there. So we charged up. We're on our way to Lone Pine supercharger. We're charging there. Even though we don't have to, we can technically skip it. We want to check out these arches. It's supposed to be like a nice little hike with arches. And there's breakfast. There's a McDonald's over there. So we're going to go ahead and check that out. That's pretty much the longest we've ever driven without taking a break. It was like two hours and 45 minutes on one charge. I arrived with, I think, 12 or 13% battery life left. It's also because I was passing a ton of trucks on the road, so I was going like 90, 95 um, in some portions. Don't speed. My wife is driving. She drives like a mad woman. Like an Asian woman. Like a true Asian woman. <laughs> Looks like this guy's a Tesla repair dude in a Model Y because he's fixing the... I didn't even know it looked like that. There's a McDonald's around here. I think it's right over there actually. We're gonna walk over there and then we're gonna go to the Alabama Hills hike, which is really close by. So it seems that there's not a lot of good bathrooms here because there is a museum, but I don't think it's open all the time. So your next bet would be McDonald's or look at all this beautiful land you have. Look at that. Yeah, so we parked over there and we just took that little gate and then the McDonald's is right over here. So super convenient. If you guys have any kids with a skateboard, there's a cool little skate park here. Look at that view though. Pretty cool. This is a nice McDonald's. Bathrooms are super clean. You can do uh, automatic payments so you don't have to worry about that if you have Apple Pay. Woo! Skate park life! <laughs> what? 
Absolutely no road. I'm going 15 miles per hour. That's pretty cool. We got a car coming up. Let's see how it does with the car. Is it gonna hug the center of the lane or is it gonna move over to the right side? It's, a, it's moving over to the right side. It's doing it all by itself. That's cool. Made it to the Mobius hike. That's cool. The Tesla was able to drive itself even on a dirt path unmarked, which is really cool. Hard arch. Boom. Definitely a rocky hike, so make sure you wear your La Sportivas and put on dog shoes for the dogs. Right now it's in October, near the end of October. And it's kind of hot, but outside as I said, it's only like 55 degrees. In the sun, it's definitely in the 70s. Simba. Went the wrong way. It's only a 0.5 mile loop, and we're back at some road. So now we gotta backtrack. And this whole landscape kind of looks like Afghanistan because that's where the first Iron Man was shot. Here. So hopefully we can see that area as well, but I mean, you can kind of tell it's already like right there. It just kind of looks like Jericho. When he uses the Jericho missile, I just thought they just went to Afghanistan to film it. For those of you guys asking, that is not a muzzle. It's called a gentle leader because the dogs love to pull, so it just kind of prevents them from pulling a little bit. But no, it is not a muzzle and I'm not torturing my dogs. Drink water. Take out my long sleeve. Oh my god, I'm about to fall. Find the way. Woohoo! Good boys. Good boy. because the road has been unpaved for like five miles now and there's no one in front of us or behind us. I mean, the test is doing it for sure, but it's just so, I can't even drive fast. What's the point of having a fast car if I can't even go fast? Look at these rocks. I don't wanna hit a rock and pop a tire. But yeah, if you guys do do this Alabama Hills Arch hike, go back the way you came. Also, you don't have to go to that movie set area because it looks the same as the hike. We went past it and it was like, this is a, looks the exact same. A few moments later. So it's literally been over 30 minutes. We're still on the stupid dirt road going only like five miles per hour. And it's because Tesla navigation actually told me that I can go this way. When we put it in Google Maps, it said to go back the way you came. We're like, you know what, it's along the way to the movie thing, so let's just go this way, can't be, can't be that bad. And here we are, still on a dirt road, haven't seen any car in sight. Yeah, at least we have some cool arches here, or rocks. But I mean, I feel like at this point you could run or walk faster. Look, five miles per hour, I'm going the same as this though. <laughs> My wife, she just said that she's just gonna walk a little bit. I didn't know human walking is about four miles per hour. Oh my God, a road. You guys see that? There's a road up there. So the moral of the story is, if Tesla and Google Maps say different things, always trust Google Maps. Hashtag regret. Where the hell is the paved road? I bet it's right on the freeway. And on top of that, I think because it was so bumpy and stuff, I keep getting this warning, so. I'm gonna have to get out of the car and hopefully it resets. Dude, it's so much worse now. <laughs>
<laughs> it's so bad. It's like they know you're finishing. So this is like the final boss. It's so <laughs> bumpy on this side. Oh, God, help me. Oh, my. Oh, my God, it's paved here. <laughs> We went to like the whole damn mountain. But look at our wheels, man. It is covered in dirt. I didn't know I got white wheels. Dude, our car is filthy. Wow, this is the this is the mammoth experience, huh? Off-roading Tesla. Okay, so now we have a new issue. I'm gonna be super pissed if there's something wrong. So I'm hoping it will just go into a deep sleep and fix itself. But I'm getting an error saying our pilot camera is unavailable. Feature may be restored on next drive. I tried the two finger reset. I've tried getting out of the car, waiting a few minutes, but uh, my autopilot and cruise control even isn't even working. I cleaned my front cameras. I cleaned all the cameras to make sure there's no dust. And yet I'm still getting that warning. Uh, I'm gonna try it again just to make sure, but when I pass a car, normally it shows that the car is there. However, now it's not even showing any cars or anything nearby. These work, the, the side repeater cameras work. Oh. There. My signal. Of course it's not gonna work because it doesn't even see a car there. My blind spot monitoring doesn't even work. Just arrived to the Bishop Supercharger. I plugged in the car, the notification went off it looks like, but man, that was so annoying. I drove over an hour, I know it's first world problems. I didn't even have cruise control, not even, something I had on my 2005 car, I didn't even have on the Tesla. No cruise control, no autopilot, no steering, no nothing. It didn't even see any cars, cones or anything. It didn't even know if there was a car in my blind spot. Uh, at least the car worked. I mean, that's a good thing, but it was. So, I'm just hoping it's a temporary thing because if it's an issue with the camera, I'm gonna be so pissed because first my high voltage battery dies and then now this thing. I mean, it's not looking good for Tesla. I mean, we, I mean, we just put an order for another car, so it's kind of annoying. But anyways, we're charging up right now and then we're gonna go to the Convict Lake hike. Last time we went, it was frozen, ice solid. It was so cool. If you guys go to Convict Lake, make sure you go in the winter time. They have a nice hike. It's like a fun, easy snow hike. You can even walk on the lake and it makes all these sounds. It's awesome. But we're gonna go in the fall when the leaves are turning yellow. So it's gonna be really pretty. I tried the two finger reset twice. I cleaned the cameras with the towel. I'm gonna try powering off the car. I turned off sentry mode. So I tried powering off the car. We've done charging. We only charged for about 15 minutes and it still has the issue that the autopilot camera is unavailable. So I'm gonna be pretty upset if we're gonna have to do a, our seven hour drive without being able to use it at all. I already put in a service request. That way it logs, cause it kind of logs the day and time of when it happened, that way they know. Hopefully it's a one-time thing because the car hasn't had a chance to really sleep yet. So I think tonight I'll just turn off sentry mode, let the car go to sleep. And now we actually have to drive two hands on the wheel, 10 and two. So I tried calibrating the cameras to see if that helps. Maybe I just got a readjusted from the vibrations of, or something. Did I fix it? Oh my, oh my god. god. I'm a genius. Oh. It makes sense though. Because I'm assuming something like got jolted from all the pumps. So now the, the angles are off. We got to Convict Lake, plenty of parking. It's like around one now. If you walk to the far left side, there's a nice paved trail. So it's super chill. I mean, there's people fishing here. The best. Okay, let's go.
got our Tesla supercharger seat set up here. Super versatile. You can use it anytime. So we did the hike. It's not a long hike. It's just a lot of elevation. So we got sandwiches I got from Vaughn's. We're going to eat some lunch here. And it's so close to our hotel. So we're just going to go back, get some, I think we're going to get ramen or something or noodles. And then uh, call it a day. Simba, are you happy? Simba, are you happy? Just got to the Airbnb. They have Nespresso pots. Sheesh. They actually have a mini. I thought it was just a mini fridge, but it's a solid fridge. Smells amazing in here. Nice bathroom. Definitely gonna use that. I need a shower. Nice view. Fireplace works. I hope. Beautiful views. Nice balcony. Nice. So it's past Simba's dinner time. We have to feed him first before we feed ourselves. We got his raw patties. He's on so many meds. This is chemo, but then he's on this medicine to help decrease his tumor size. And he has to take Pepsid and Benadryl. This is eardrops because he has an ear infection. And this is all of his immune supplements that's supposed to boost his immune system. But man, it is a lot of stuff. All right, guys, day one is in the books. I am tired, but overall the trip is super relaxing. The Airbnb we're staying at, it's at the Westin, and it's awesome, we love it. We charged our Tesla at the resort for free, which is great. I think I fixed the autopilot camera issue. I just had to recalibrate the cameras. Honestly, I think the problem came because the road was so bumpy and may have jolted one of the cameras or something out of position, so that's why it didn't work. See you guys tomorrow.